when the Atlanta Falcons face off with the Miami Dolphins tonight, rookie quarterback Michael Penix Jr. will have the spotlight, the eyes, and all the expectations to perform against that secondary. We're going to discuss this and more coming up next on today's episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a senior draft analyst. And thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every Dayers, I got to kick the intro to Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. You can talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 national champion, and the other side to this dynamic duel that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Well, I want to start this podcast off by saying shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. Listen, if you can hear my voice, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to comment after each segment, and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel over at Locked On NFL Draft DP preseason preview we have three really good matchups we have the atlanta falcons versus the miami dolphins we have the houston texas versus the pittsburgh steelers on tap and then we have those philadelphia eagles versus the baltimore ravens so we're going to talk about all three all three matchups talk about some of these draft prospects we might throw in a couple of 2023 nfl draft prospects that haven't quite played yet to that standard right that we may want to see in these preseason games but before we get started dp why don't you hit them with our title sponsor LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Keith, the Atlanta Falcons. I, I know there's a lot of Falcons fans who are going to be excited to potentially and hopefully see their starters, Kirk Cousins, Drake London, Kyle Pitts. But I got to go to the, to the rookie, man. The number eight was number eighth overall pick, uh, Michael Penix Jr., I want to see, same what we talked about with Drake May and everything, I want to see as much of Michael Penix as possible, right? Not not saying that I don't care about seeing Kirk Cousins. I know what Kirk Cousins is. When he's healthy, he's a good quarterback. I know what he's going to be able to do. And with these weapons, their offense should be lights out, explosive, dynamic, and put up points. I want to see Michael Penix go out there. The last time we saw him play was at the Senior Bowl. Right, he didn't play in the game. He just practiced for what, two or three days. But the last full game we saw him was against Michigan in the national championship game. Right, so I want to see him out here with these kind of backup receivers. You think about Cardero Hodge, um, you know the young kid, you know a receiver out of Illinois, a guy that I liked, big. I think he's like 6'2", 210 plus pounds. I think a four four athlete, Casey Washington, a guy that knows how to play above the rim, body control, contested catches, back shoulder phase, but he has the vertical speed to win down the field i want to see what, what michael Penix looks like in the end game situation see how quickly he can get the jitters off and okay settle in things of that nature they're going you know, of course they have a plethora of running backs behind Bijan, but i'm excited to see michael Penix jr yeah I, I, i'm excited too i just want to see what he looks like in the nfl and you talked about our last glimpse of him right it, it wasn't great you know what i'm saying the situation yeah. with michigan versus washington um and, and gave people a lot of skepticism but i want to see him in this offense and i and i think if it's what we've seen at the super bowl should be an efficient quarterback see him move around a little bit right with some of these bootleg type situations these mm -hmm. um structured plays to where the quarterback is supposed to get out of the pocket um I'm, I'm excited to to watch him right and even though it's not with the the premier guys that they've drafted right as far as you know the Kyle Pitts and the Bijan and the Drake London I'm excited just to watch him um operate the offense efficiently and effectively DP I'm a really tr I'm a transition real quick uh because we still have to fit the Dolphins in right We're talking about the defensive side of the football for the Atlanta Falcons Ruka Roar Roar, right? A guy that I'm extremely excited to get eyes on. Uh, was one of my favorite draft prospects um, in this past draft class. And then it's going to be one thing I'm going to be paying attention to, DP. And it's probably the thing that you've been most critical about the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> it's this edge rusher situation, right? Yeah. Um, I want to see who emerges out of 
Braylon Trice and Arnold Ebiketti, right? Like, like who's who's gonna be the starter? Arnold Ebiketti, I think, is heading into year three. Uh, Braylon Trice is a is a rookie. Uh, wanting to see which one of those guys really step up and start to look like they can be edge one for the Atlanta Falcons. No, hundred percent, Keith. You talk about Ruka Rororo, Brandon Dorless, who they drafted. They yep. double. They went three straight defensive linemen with Rook, Dorless, and then. Um, you know, like you said, with Braylon Trice, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing all those guys because at the end of the day, you got to you got to be able to get pressure off the edge. And even if crazy enough, Keith, if you could get if Braylon, if you can get Braylon Trice and Arnold Epichetti on the field at the same time, that might be your best pass rush group. So I'm mm -hmm. really looking at, absolutely keep my eyes on that because if, if this doesn't work out, Terry, we're gonna have to have a discussion. Uh, Keith, let's jump to those Miami Dolphins. I got to go to my favorite position, of course, my guys, the running back. Jalen Wright, you know, I don't expect to see a ton of uh, Raheem Mostert and Devon Chain. I think Jalen Wright could come out there and, and really showcase everything he did at, at Tennessee. That game-breaking speed, 4-3, that track star type of speed in open field, but a guy that also had good contact balance for the most part. Looking forward to seeing him. Malik Washington, the guy that's been on the show uh, this past draft cycle, sat down with him. And a guy who works hard, he's dynamic, he's explosive run after catch. He's kind of built similar to not calling him Tyreek Hill, but he's built similar as in that kind of running back frame in as that's playing wide receiver. So I'm looking forward to seeing how, you know, how many touches he gets um, and how they feature him in this offense. Do they uh, tr treat him like a traditional wide receiver like they do with Waddle and we got Odell Beckham here and Tyreek Hill, or do they get kind of creative with him and a lot of, you know, they use pre-snap motion regardless, but do how do they treat him? Is he a manufactured touch guy? Is he going to be a lot on special teams as well? Looking forward to, to how that works out. Keith, I, I had a feeling you might be looking at somebody in the trenches that was drafted a little higher than we expected. <laughs> DP is, is actually a couple guys, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start with uh Patrick Paul, right? Um, definitely went higher than what we expected at the end of the day. Um, and we'll see. I mean, because they, I, I'm assuming that they have an offensive tackle need, right? I mean, they have Austin Jackson on one side, Teron on instead, but you still pat you drafted Patrick Paul, um, fairly high, right? And you're talking about a developmental project at the offensive tackle. Well, that's how I felt about him yeah. as a draft prospect. So that'll be interesting to see just how that plays out. But honestly, just to watch him, right? To see if this is a transition type of player, right? Or, or what, what is their plan? Because they drafted him high. So you, you have to, have a plan of potentially getting them on the field. That's the only thing I could think of. DP, I want to go with the other guy I want to talk about before we have the transition is defensive back Cam Smith from South Carolina, who mm -hmm. this past year he didn't play much, and there was not a lot of reason to why he didn't play much. Uh, I remember looking at it when we did our team uh, situations, right, and, and we had to evaluate the teams, and it was just like I remember there were some quotes from head coach uh, McDaniels, and he was just kind of like he's just not ready yet, right? And I, and I don't know if it's a it's a knowing of the playbook, eye discipline, whatever it may be, but he's a key element to what they're trying to do. And talking about moving forward, right? Because they have mm -hmm. Kendall Fuller on one side, Jalen Ramsey, but Cam Smith was one of those height, weight, speed guys, right? That can run, that was fluid hips, that was quick twitch, that can play man to man. So he would add a whole nother element. So Cam Smith is definitely somebody I'm looking forward to see if he plays a lot in the preseason. No, hundred percent, right? Like, cause you know, losing Xavier How Xavier Howard, who they released this pat early in the off season, right? They had some cap issues. They they let him go out of his contract. You're gonna need somebody to play opposite of of Jalen Ramsey, and that's what you hope that Cam Smith, who they drafted what 2020, like second round in the 2023 mm -hmm. NFL yeah, draft, he drafted he was like him high. Pick 23 is, I mean, pick 53 or something like that. Yeah, pick like, 51. So, you invested a decent uh, draft capital in him. So talk about, but the you know, last two guys, Keith. Chop Robinson, right? You know, him and Muhammad Kamara, they doubled down mm. on the edge rush in the 2024 NFL draft. That's a good call, right? those DP. That's a good call. Like, to, to, you know, they lost Jalen Phillips to an ACL. They lost Bradley Chubb to an ACL last year. And it was just like, man, like that, that's, you hate to see that. But then they said, okay, let's prevent this. Even when those guys come back, we have enough depth and talent and youth to where we're not going to have to deal with any type of problems if it if they don't start the season. So Chop Robinson and Muhammad Kamara, I want to see those guys fly off the edge, man. Pin their ears back, and if they're on the same if they're on the same team in terms of first and second team, if they're out there with Cam Smith, 
make his job easier. Get back there, pressure the quarterback, and make him get the ball out. Let's see if Cam Smith can make some plays on the ball and coverage. Yeah, I agree 100% with DP. Let's keep this thing going. Let's keep it flowing, man. We are on to the Houston, Texas versus the Pittsburgh Still to see that matchup. Obviously, there's going to be a little quarterback intrigue, right? But we're going to talk about the rest of the players. Also, those rookies and those second-year players coming up next. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your number one ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or you get your money back. Why? Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your number one ride to die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Drafted prospects to watch when the Pittsburgh Steelers take the field and face off with those Houston Texans. And Keith, I, I got to go to the trenches. A guy we both like absolutely loved his game and everything he brought to the table, the, the physicality, the aggressiveness. Troy Faltanu uh, at tackle, right? They drafted him. They went, they went like heavy O line in the 2024 NFL draft, Keith. Like Troy, Zach Frazier, Mason McCormick. But I, I know that they, Broderick Jones, I think he's been dealing like a little bit of an elbow thing. So um, so I think he's been kind of limited in practice and in camp. But Dan Moore, uh, who's been, I expect Broderick to take that spot. I think that's where it's trending to play, to take the left tackle spot. And Troy has been, this the, the talk out of camp is that Troy was giving TJ Watt some trouble in, in one-on-ones play, and playing right tackle, a position he's not known to play. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing him and how he handles the the pass rush from Houston, whether I'm not sure. I don't think Will Anderson is going to play, but they got Derek Barnett. They have some uh, plenty of veterans, you know, Mar you know, Mario Edwards who can play inside and out. You know, they got enough guys that can really test them. But I'm looking forward to seeing how Troy Fatanu handles and protects. And I hope to see that it's probably Justin Fields, uh, but it'll probably see both Fields and Russell Wilson in this game. Yeah, I mean, we might as well just throw the quarterback thing out there, right? And see Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, one of those guys, right? Just get right. that part <laughs> over with with that matchup. But yeah, DP, talk about the Steelers, man. To see this offensive line and kind of them uh, blending the old with the – well, not the old with the new, but kind of this transition, right? So if you can get an offensive line group of, of Broderick Jones, right, and then you get Zach Frazier, Troy Fontano, plus Mason McCormick, somewhere in there at some point, you get to get an opportunity to see – what the new look Steelers are going to look like as far as being role grading type of football players. Right. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see that part of it with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but you continue to look at this depth chart and some of the moves they've made as far as bringing rookies. I want to quickly transition over to the defensive side of the football. Um, my guy, right. Mr. Peyton Wilson, right. Everybody talked about it. Didn't have an ACL. Well, guess what? Get my guy an ACL. He, he can be legendary inside this defense. I always, I, I keep saying is that I think you pair him and, Patrick Queen up together, right? You put a young guy and a veteran together and they complement each other very well. I believe that I think it could be a really good situation as far as, uh, you know, watching Peyton Wilson, watching him move out there and watching him do some things. There's another young guy, DP, along this defensive front. I think he's, he's going into his third year, right? But not as many snaps. Um, DeMarvin Leal. I want to mm -hmm. check him out. Uh, the, he, he's an edge rusher from Texas A&M. Um, you know, I, I liked him a lot coming out of out of out of Texas A&M. He had to kind of play different positions because um, I think they had the injuries, right? I think it was with T.J. Watt got hurt last year, and then it was somebody else. But it was like two, three deep edge rushers that got hurt, so they had to kick him from defensive tackle to edge, which he was athletic enough to do. But I think, like I always say, his athletically advantageous spot was playing the edge rusher i mean yeah playing the defensive tackle position and then just to really wrap up real quick dp the last thing i'm looking for um i heard a lot about what's well, two guys honestly this cornerback position 
Joey Porter Jr., right? Heard a lot about, you know, how he dominated last year. Wants to see if he picks – want to see if he picks up year two. And then yeah, Darius Rush. Remember Darius Rush? We watched Darius yeah. Rush at the senior bowl. He's been on a couple different teams. He was probably one of the best – not just defensive backs, but probably one of the standout football players at the senior bowl. And I think he's been on the like in just one year, because I think that was last year's senior bowl. Mm -hmm. He's been on the I think the Colts drafted him, maybe. Then I think he was at the Chiefs for a minute or something like that. So this may be his third time in just a short stint. So um, I'm gonna be looking for Darius Rush to see what's going on with that situation. Uh, because yeah, I think he can turn out to be a good football player. Yeah, I mean, they're talking about a guy who was blanketing most of the only receiver I think that he struggled with is the receiver everybody struggled with. That was Tank Dale. Like, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, that was just kind of par for the course, but he was out there running routes for the receivers, like taking the ball away. He did everything. So I, I, I'm definitely that's a good call out, Keith. I'm a, I'm gonna stick with the DB right there for in that in that group. Corey Trice Jr. got it. Um, per, le, re, looking at some of the reports uh, out of Pittsburgh, saying that he's getting a lot of run in the dime package, and they're hoping that he could potentially be that tight end defender. You know, dealing with like the Travis Kelsey in the a, in, in the AFC. You got Mark Andrews and David Njoku in the same exact division as you with the Browns and the Ravens. Also, Mike Gesicki. Who's going to be the who should be the starting tight end uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals with Joe Burrow? You kind of need somebody that has the size and athleticism and and ball skills and length to be able to man uh, man up with those type of guys because it's very hard to put like a safety and a linebacker on them. I think he he has and fits the mold as that kind of take that tight end eraser if he can fill that role and develop into it. But also Nick Herbig, you know, a guy his crazy. I think his, his older brother is supposed to be the starting center, Nate Herbig. Nick coming out of Wisconsin, like a lot of people, once they saw him last year, Keith, they said, man, like he looks like T.J. Watt Jr. And it's like mm-hmm. first step quickness, bend, uh, speed to power, like advanced hand. The same way we the, the way we talked about Leitu, La, Leatu Latu is the way I talked about Nick Herbig. He was so advanced in knowing how to reduce angles, like reduce surface hitting area, clear hands. Like he's just really good at that altogether. So I'm keeping my eyes uh, on him as well as a second year player when he get. Oh, shout out uh, shout out to my guy Keon the Bitten who's supposed to. He's a starter, but I want to you know see if he if he does start. And see, just see if he's taking that step as a pass rusher that me and him talked about at the Senior Bowl last year. He's very self-aware player, good player, great run defender. Now, can you consistently develop on passing downs to really get that full three-down value out of his skill set? But deep on, on the the Houston Texans, Keith, I think we we called it last week, and I'm gonna call it again. Xavier Hutchins. Like at the end of the day, this is a loaded wide receiver room. This is a second-year player who didn't play a lot, who fell in the draft, and we never believed that he should have fallen in the draft. We still don't know why he fell in the draft, but you look at his, his first preseason game in the Hall of Fame game, six targets, five receptions, 56 yards. Like, zone beater all day. He's working the middle of the field. He had he had complete control of his routes. He's putting guys on skates. Like, he was doing everything out there. So I'm looking forward to seeing if he can keep that up, and, and especially. Uh, we, we know I expect to see the starters a little bit in this game, but not long. Um, and then Kate Stover as well on the offensive side, a guy that showcased good run blocker. I think he had two receptions in the game, working the outside, but then also the physicality and strength after the catch that he always brings. But he's got straight line speed too, so it's like getting up the seam. If you are playing zone and you're not manning him up and you give him a free release. He can open that stride and, and, and pick up speed pretty quickly. So just some offensive guys, again, for the Houston Texans that I'm absolutely looking out for. Yep, you cover the offense, DP. I'm going to cover the defense, right? Uh, Looking forward, and obviously he's slated as the starter, but looking forward to seeing Henry Toto out there, right, going into his second year. I think there can be some, you know, really good situations for him. Along the defensive line, they have a pretty veteran defensive line front. Uh, maybe potentially Ali Gay will be a guy, right? Remember, he was a LSU mm-hmm. superstar a couple of years ago, and things have kind of, I want to say, I guess faded is the best way. But, you know, you're talking about a 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, uh, young man. If he's not playing for the Houston Texans, you know, he's playing for some uh, to be on somebody's roster, right? Um, Then I look at this secondary DP. They have young guys, but a lot of guys moving into what they're like second, third this year. So obviously Derek Stingley, uh, Kamari Lasseter, who played last year. And then I'm also looking at rookie 
Kalen Bullock, right? Like to see what he does, to see what his role is in this defense and what does he call out for themselves? Because we we like them as a ball hawk, right? Playing the back end of the defense, but obviously tackling was something that needs to be improved upon. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how defenses, I mean, how offenses target him and try to get him involved in the run game. And then what's that role that he carves out for himself? But DP, let's keep this thing going, man. Up next, yes, we're going to the battle of the birds, man. We're going to Philadelphia Eagles versus the Baltimore Ravens and talk about their draft prospects coming up next when you're hiring for your small business you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs linkedin jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free linkedin isn't just a job board linkedin helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker for you. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's show is sponsored by Better Help. Some of my self-care non-negotiables, guys, to be honest, never missing my monthly appointment with my therapist, making sure mentally I'm in the right place in my attitude. I'm able to unload and offload things that have been bothering me or troubling me, but also now getting myself back into the gym to make sure not only am I mentally healthy, but my health is correct. And I'm fitness. My fitness is on par and on track. When your schedule is packed with kids, activities, big projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, sometimes it's hard to make time for it. Guys, if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on thank you for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day shout out for being our every dayers the philadelphia eagles prospects from the 2024 and even 2023 nfl draft class that you need to watch we got to go to what what, what round was it? Six round, 185th pick, Keith. A guy that we both saw as a day two prospect at worst, Johnny Wilson. A guy that they say he's been ripping and running in camp, absolutely killing it. And he's even gotten snaps, a lot of snaps in training camp with the ones. And potentially he's going to be their wide receiver three. I want to see him, even if he's if that is the case, that he might be their wide receiver three, I still want to see as much of him as possible, right? Just how they use him. Right with with uh, Nick Sirianni and everything, um, I think is it Kellen Moore, the OC now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You know, coming from Dallas, and I think with the Chargers last year, <clears throat> how do they use the big six foot six, two hundred and thirty five, forty pound wide receiver? That I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think he ran a four five somewhere in there. He showed good speed in the forty for the most part. So with Johnny Wilson. I want to just see where they line him up, right? Like I think he fell to the, to the six round Keith because he wouldn't take the I'm going to play tight end role. Like he, he was like, no, I'm a receiver and I'm not going to move off of that. And teams are like, okay, that's fine. So for him, I don't want to see how they use the big fella. Do the, is he outside? Is he in the slot? Is he moved in motion? How, where does he line up? How do they use him? Is he the deep threat? Is he just going to be a contested catch guy? That, will they use him to work the middle of the field as another big body target? Because you know they got Dallas Goddard at the tight end spot, but the talent behind him isn't great. So he can honestly kind of line up in that role and still play wide receiver if you want to go 11 and 10 personnel. But also Will Shipley, Keith, the, the, the running back out of Clemson that we both liked coming out, kind of a change of pace guy behind, uh, you know, Saquon Barkley, Kenneth Gainwell, guy that can run routes, catch the ball in the backfield, all that type of stuff, man. They got some, some young offensive players that I'm very excited to see. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. DP, I'm going to go to the defensive side of the – I mean, not the defense, I'm sorry. The offensive line, the trenches is what I wanted to say because they have some some young guys, DP, that are going to have to play some pivotal roles, right? You're talking about J.C. Kelsey retiring, boom. Cam Jurgens is now the starter, right? Um, Tyler Steen, the kid from Alabama last year, listed as the starter at left guard. Another young player, you know, that we evaluated through the draft. I, I, I thought he was fairly good and think he can be a starting offensive tackle in the NFL. But then I'm going to talk about – two of the more intriguing draft names dp that they have as backups makai beckton and darian Kennard. that combination in itself right like that's i, I mean you talking about guys with high pretty good athleticism right and it's just they just a lot there's a lot going on i think that's the best way you could put it dp when it comes to talking about those two names but i thought that was rather interesting backups that they had as far as you know who those guys were coming out in the draft and then the draft process yeah. and then up into now and then the big boy dp i know you you watched them Aneen Denkwa from the hbcu what big yeah. to a six seven three hundred and forty pound kid so see what he's able to do um in the trenches yeah i, I, I think with <clears throat> excuse me with Denkwa. This is, this is a guy that you just want to see him play to that size consistently um, in terms of, bro, you are a people mover. You look like a people mover. And, you know, he and he was fairly – he was a fairly athletic mover as well at that size. He reminded me of a – not to say poor man's, but uh, an HBCU version of Dewan Jones. But he was playing left tackle while Dewan played right. So that's going to be very interesting. I think on the depth chart – He's listed. listed yep, he's right. listed at right tackle. So it'll be interesting when we get to that second, third unit, and when he gets on the field. And I think for him, just getting those reps uh, against NFL caliber rushers, whether it's backups, guys fighting for roster spots who've been in the league, it doesn't really matter. I think that would be very, very key for him. Also, keep an eye on backup guard out of Michigan, Trevor Keegan. You're talking about a team that wants to run the ball. He's used to running the ball with Michigan. Uh, guy that they drafted, uh, they got in, in, in the 2024 NFL draft, fifth round, uh, you know, out of Michigan, championship pedigree, physical, strong, wide body, um, you know, and a guy that knows how to get it done, but also on the offensive side before we switch to defense real quick, Tanner McKee, supposed to be quarterback two, you know what I mean, behind um, behind Jalen Hurts. We want to see what he looks like in year two. But he, on the defensive side of the ball, got to go right to the cornerback spot, Quinion Mitchell. Like I want to see Quinion get on the field. I want to see him play and, and play at a high level, first of all, because if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, you need to see that. You, you spend a first-round pick on him. This is a guy that great ball skills, great athlete. He has that silent assassin type of mentality. He doesn't talk a whole lot, but he gets just gets the job done. And then this Vic Vangio defense that plays 80% zone, he's kind of going to be at home in this defense. Yep, no, I'm right there with you, DP. I'm gonna look at I'm gonna go in the trenches a little bit. Um, and it's been a couple guys that they've drafted. Uh Moro Jamo, who they drafted, not this past draft, but the year before. And then Thomas Booker the Fort, DP. Um, they drafted two years ago. And the reason I list those guys off is because just like the offensive side of football lost a, a Hall of Fame in the trenches, the defensive side of football lost a Hall of Fame in the trenches in Fletcher Cox. So that defensive tackle rotation is gonna be very important to watch which one of these young guys, because you know Jordan Davis all could go with all is off of historical data right like he's going to give you half or whatever the snaps are that are played for the game so those backup defense attackers are going to be very important because they're going to play a significant amount of snaps just playing just playing the game and then the other guy dp that i'm looking forward to i would like to look forward to nolan smith and see what happens with that situation but i'll yeah. go with jalex hunt um, because I don't know if Nolan's how much Nolan is going to play, but I'm gonna go with Jalex Hunt, another HBCU. I think he came from what Houston Christian, I believe. Um, yeah. you know, 6'3, 250 pounds, and people are you know really excited about him, but they also need to figure out this edge rusher position, especially with no Hassan Reddick anymore, right? Like who's gonna be their sack yeah. getter? Um, and so I'm I'm looking at Jalex Hunt as a young guy. Also, you know, Jeremiah Charles Jr., if he's if he gets the, the, the reps in this game, you kind of have to figure out what your what your linebacker position is going to look like. Their, their current starter, Zach Bond, did give a hefty praise to Jeremiah Charles from training camp. So hopefully we see him and see a good bit of him because this was an instinctive player. But similar to Kobe Dean, he didn't have the measurements or the prototypical athleticism at the linebacker position that teams typically want. But he has everything else that you really want. A, a three down backer in my opinion let's jump to those 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 baltimore ravens keith and, and i got to go to wide receiver Devontae walker 
um, out of out of uh, North Carolina, a guy that brings explosive speed, vertical. I think what was it four three in the forty at the combine, which you saw that on tape. He ran past most guys on tape if you didn't get hands on him. So just kind of seeing, you know, he's not going to be with the starters or anything. But want to see that that maturation throughout the game. Do they pepper him with targets? Where is he lining up? Does he get any reps in the slot? Has he improved as a route runner? That was one of the things I put in my report. I wanted to see him just improve at route salesmanship because when you're that fast and that explosive, if you can work on the routes and win with route running, that makes you even much more dangerous of a weapon that teams have to, okay, if we can't press him at the line because we're afraid to get ran by, but he can also sell routes and get you to bite hard downhill, double moves, things of that nature. It makes it so much more difficult to scheme uh, to scheme against him. So I'm looking forward to him, Keith, but also Roger Rosengarten, a guy I absolutely love throughout the 2024 process, what, uh, right tackle out of Washington. We all love Troy Faltanu, but for a while it felt like Ro- Roger wasn't getting any type, any pub, any hype or anything, and he saw him down at the Senior Bowl too, play right tackle and left tackle. He did both well, and this is a position where they trade Morgan Moses to the Jets opening a spot for their right tackle spot. So I'm looking at I'm looking at that um that situation. And I don't know if you know this kid, but Daniel Falele, the big six, seven, six, eight, whatever he was coming out of Minnesota, he might be starting that guard. So that's gonna be a, a interesting uh dynamic to watch out too. Cause if both of those guys are starting or at some point, you're gonna have two six five plus guard and uh right tackle tandem uh to kind of work for this Baltimore Ravens offense. Yep, I'm going to list off DP real quick. Andrew Voorhees, a guy that coming into his oh. final season, right, was like one of the top – he's a top 50 player. Then his draft stock kind of dropped. I didn't agree with how much it dropped at that point. I still probably had a late day two grade on him, thought he, you know, could be a, a power run, roll grader, gap scheme, things like that. And then I think he tore – yeah, not even – tore his ACL during the combine, right? And that late in the process, man, that just kind of really hurts your draft stock, right? Yeah. And so he's with the Baltimore Ravens. Now he's listed as the starting left guard. I, I'm I'm excited to see what he's able to do, um, being healthy. But let's let's go to the defensive side of the football. DP for the Baltimore Ravens, and you just look at a couple guys. I'm gonna go with another name, right? That has been around was another high high profile name. We just haven't seen much of him, and that's David Ajabo. DP, yeah. um, you know, I think he was back to back injuries, but people loved him and said that he's one of the best edge rushers in his draft class. Um, he fell a little bit towards Achilles, I think, doing pro day uh for his workouts and then he doubled back and tore his acl or his keelys again i believe um so he's coming off a couple injuries but a highly talented football player excited to see him no 100 i think there was you know he had i think a strip sack uh, uh against the texans when they played the texans on, on cj stroud uh i can't remember if it was i think because they played texans twice in the season they play them early then i think they, they played them again in, in the, the playoffs, playoffs. Yep. Um, I can't remember which game it was, but I remember him having – it was week one. It was week one. Uh, he had a strip sack in, like, the fourth quarter. You saw the speed, the burst, the bend. And it was just like, man, if we could just keep him healthy. So I, I love that that call out. Of course, my guy, Nate Wiggins, looking forward to seeing him and how much uh, snaps he put. Does he play with the ones? You know, if they go to, to, to nickel personnel, does he go outside and then you bring in, uh, you know, Brandon Stevens and, and have Arthur Millett and, or – or um. Marlon Humphrey, like where does he play, uh, you know, and everything like that. And also Adisa Isaac, a guy they drafted this yep. year to help with their pass rush. So it's, they have a lot of young players that we could definitely go to keep our eyes on and we hope to see a lot from. Yeah, I agree 100% with DP. That wraps up another episode, man, of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to end this podcast off by saying shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. Go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to comment and make make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel over at Locked On NFL Draft. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at the talent code that right there is my guy my co-host mr damian parson you can find him on x at dp underscore nfl and like we like to say man y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back go subscribe and follow for free on youtube wherever you listen to podcasts get the latest episode as soon as it is available thank you for making locked on nfl jeff your first listen today and every day shout out for being our every dayers listen guys have a great weekend of of preseason football and we'll be back on monday so come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the locked on podcast network your team every day